Good evening and welcome to our Holy Thursday celebration together, including the washing of feet. This is Light of Christ and Bethlehem Lutheran worshiping together on this Holy Thursday. Please rise for our opening song. Let us begin our tritium celebration of Holy Week together as one expression of God's people. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the love of our Creator God, the new life promised by our brother Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. It is important that before we approach the Lord's table, we remember that God is all-loving and holy, as well as all-merciful and forgiving. We come to this space in penitence to acknowledge that we are in need of God's forgiveness. Repentance is an essential movement in faithfully receiving God's grace. We seek to have the relationship between ourselves and God set right as we approach the altar for communion today. So let us remember our God who drenches us in grace. God, you are the creative word that brought forth water. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, through baptism, you offer us new life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. God, you give us the courage to go out and wash the feet of others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My friends, hear the good news. Christ's life, death, and resurrection have revealed life eternal for us. Our sins are forgiven. Go forth refreshed and renewed in the name of God, in the name of love, and in the name of new life. With gratitude in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, forever in our midst, we enter your presence with soiled feet, calloused and dirty with the messiness of our lives. 
We have walked in the mire of selfishness and pride, not loving others as you have loved us. Set our feet on the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Walk with us and encourage us to walk with one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We'll move to our liturgy of the word right now. And so what we've done is we've combined some scripture with some prayer. We have some speaking parts. You have some bolded speaking parts. And then we will have music throughout. So let us begin with song. From John chapter 13. On the night before Passover, Jesus rose from the supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel and poured water, and washed his disciples' feet, saying to them, If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Lord, teach us to wash feet for the world you so much love. Christ Jesus, our Redeemer and friend, who for joy became our servant, lead, lead us, us to joyful, joyful service of the needy. needy. Jesus, suffering Savior and praying priest, empower us by patient bearing of injuries to spread the peace of your cross. By steadfast endurance, without envy or resentment, to demonstrate your victory. By steady and faithful prayer, to carry our neighbor into your gracious presence. Will true charity and love From John chapter 13. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Lord, teach us to wash feet for the world you so much love. Teach me, O oh my Maker, to look upon my person and my abilities as your gifts, so that I may trust your care for me, so that I may be delivered from jealousy and envy, so that I may see you hidden in my neighbor, and there serve you with gladness. Child of righteousness, take the side of the oppressed, protect those who are vulnerable, 
especially the young. Curb sinners in their way and restore the fallen. Jesus, friend of sinners, companion of the outcast, advocate for the needy. Enlighten our eyes to see you in our needy neighbor. From John chapter 12. While Jesus was at Bethany, they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table. Mary took a pound of very costly ointment and poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. God of grace, compassionate Christ, consoling spirit, Remember Remember in in mercy mercy the sick and the dying, the the suffering and persecuted, the the fearful and distraught, the the bored and despairing. By your goodness, grant relief to all in need and and strengthen them to trust in you. God of grace, who joined us to the death and resurrection and work of your eternal Son in baptism, Make Make our our whole lives a living from and returning to that that holy font. God of grace, you create us into a new community. Make us to be indeed the body of Christ and a vehicle of love love and joy in this this world world, until we offer the full and perfect praise forever. forever. Amen. Amen. At Light of Christ, our theme for this Lenten season has been to be a light, to be a light as community, and to be light as individuals. And so we light the candles in our midst to remember that it is the light of our God, the light of Christ, who fans the flame of the light in us. Be in touch with that light within yourself, within your body, your mind, and your spirit.
case there's anyone new here tonight who doesn't know, I am Father Terry. I get to serve as the pastor at Light of Christ, the ecumenical Catholic community located in this building. And this is Pastor Katie. She gets to serve. I think you feel like you get to serve <laughs> as the pastor at Bethlehem Lutheran. Um, and we consider ourselves nested within Bethlehem Lutheran. So we do both welcome you. There's something about our world or human nature, I'm not quite sure what it is, but there's something that encourages us all to think in binaries. There's up and there's down. There's on and there's off. And for some reason when we do that, then often one of the things in the pair gets labeled as good, and therefore the other one gets labeled as bad. So light is good, but darkness is bad. Except it's weird because we all know from our own life experiences that that's not always true. For me, light is what triggers my migraines, and I assure you, they are very bad. And I find comfort often in the holiness of darkness. A seed needs the darkness of the dirt in order to break open and live into its full potential. And we all started in the darkness of a womb. So in my own life, I try to dismantle those binaries, both in my life and in scripture, as well as in my experience of religion. And come on, let's face it. Religion likes its binaries. There's wheat and there's weeds. There's sheep and there's goats. There's Catholics and there's Lutherans. <laughs> Look at us. We are dismantling binaries as I speak. Right here, Catholics and Lutherans have gathered together to celebrate what Catholics call Holy Thursday and you Lutherans call Maundy Thursday. And I'm going to assure you, us Catholics have no idea what that means. <laughs> and there's other folks here as well. One of the hardest binaries to disrupt, though, is the one of truth and falsehood. If we know that something is true, then anything else must be false. So let me take you on a little journey. It's sort of a parable, but with actions. And I'm going to talk through it and do it first. And then I'm going to invite you to do it as well. And then I promise most of you are going to go home in the privacy of your home and do it and say, oh my gosh, that really did work. All right, so here's what it looks like. It's my finger going in a circle. Now you can see that the back of my hand is facing you, and my finger is moving in a circle. And I look at that circle, and I describe it to you, and I say, my finger is moving in a circle, going clockwise. Yeah, it is. It's, that's, that's the truth. It's going clockwise. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise it up. I'm doing the same thing. You can see my hand is still facing you, the back of my hand. And so I'm going to describe it to you, and I'm going to tell you that my finger is moving in a circle, and it's moving counterclockwise. Here, it's cl clockwise. Here, it's counterclockwise. All right, now, <laughs> I'm going to invite you to do this with me. It does take a little bit of coordination. But I'm not flipping or doing anything, all right? I'm just raising it up, so very slowly, Make that circle in front of you and go clockwise. Do you see that it's moving clockwise? All right, just keep that motion going and very slowly move up, move up, and look. And do you see that it's going counterclockwise? If I got so rooted in my truth when it was going clockwise. And somebody said to me, no, that finger is moving counterclockwise. 
And I was so rooted in my truth that I didn't listen to them, that I didn't hear them and engage a conversation with them. We would be divided because their falsehood is the only thing that I would know about their story. But if we can talk and share our our truths, even though they sound like opposites, what we both learn is something more complete and more full about the story of just my finger making a circle. As followers of Jesus, I think it is important for us to recognize this reality about truth. And I believe that when we do, it helps us to nurture compassion and deep listening. By partnering with others who seem to have a truth very different than our own, but collaborating and conversing with them. And I mean not just speaking, but listening as well. If we do that, we can develop a fuller understanding of truth and of God. And for me, that means partnering with people who don't even consider themselves to be followers of Jesus. Maybe they're another religion, or maybe they aren't religious at all. Maybe they're scientists or artists. But if we can partner together, honor our diversity instead of letting it be divisive, I think we are exposed to a fuller understanding of what truth is and God can be in our world. And I think our scripture invites us to this kind of dismantling of binaries. Today we remember that the night before Jesus died, there are two very common activities that he was engaged in, eating a meal and washing feet. Every day, you and I do these same things. We eat and we get cleaned up. Now, some of our scripture tells us that on the night before Jesus died, he shared a meal with his followers and family and friends. And we hear that at that meal, he broke bread and he blessed it and shared it saying, do this and remember me. He also took wine. He blessed it as well and shared it, saying, Do this and remember me. But in another part of our scripture, the Gospel of John, it doesn't really recall that story at all. Yes, there is a meal, but in that story, Jesus took a towel, tied it around his waist, and washed the feet of those who were gathered with him. And after doing this, he said, just as I have washed your feet, I want you to wash others' feet. We recognize these two stories, and we hold the two truths that are revealed to us through those stories. And as followers of Jesus, we embody these two truths and have a fuller understanding, then, of what it is to truly be a disciple of Jesus. And so every week, we share bread, blessed and broken, and we remember Jesus, and we strive to be the visible body of Christ in the world today. And then once a year, we gather again, and we wash one another's feet. We embrace both truths, to be community together, striving to be the body of Christ, and committed to serving in God's world. I've often wondered, though, how we would be changed if for just one year we reversed how we emphasize those two stories and their truths. What if for one year we gathered every week and washed one another's feet And then just once in that year, we gathered and shared bread and wine together. Would we see the finger that had always been circling clockwise for us to suddenly be circling counterclockwise? 
Would a year of washing feet together bring us to a different but equally valid truth about what it is to follow Jesus and truly pick up his unfinished business in the world today? Anyway, we're not doing that. (laughs) But just by being here, Being together, Lutherans and Catholics and others I know, who will wash feet and hands, who will share bread and wine together, who will say, we do this in the memory of Jesus together. We are already bringing to light a new truth in the world that all may see. A truth that for hundreds of years people thought was impossible. We are expanding what the world may know as the truth of God in our midst, where diversity does not have to divide, but can be honored and be good. My friends, we can be wheat and weeds. I'm happy to be the weeds. Most of you know I have celiac disease. I'm not crazy about wheat anyway. We can be that together. We can be sheep and goats, and I'm happy to be the goats, too, together. And we are Catholics and Lutherans and others together. Amen. Amen. So we are going to move to our ritual of the washing of feet. There are several options, so let me sort of describe Um, how we're going to do it so you're a little bit oriented, but if you're confused, just ask someone around you to help. So we have two feet washing stations. One is over here, and Pastor Katie will be there. The other one is over there, and I will be there. They're so far apart, just so you know, this one is on the camera so the people at home can witness, and this one is off the camera in case that's something that interests you. So what you'll do if you want to go to one of the foot washing stations is um, we're actually going to wash the first person's feet. And then after you have your feet washed, you will wash the feet of the person behind you. So everybody will have their feet washed and everybody will wash the feet of someone else. Okay. And Katie and I, Pastor Katie and I will be at those stations. So we will help guide how that's supposed to go. For the washing, it's just a little bit of water, and then we have individual towels. So you'll probably really spend more time with the drying of the feet than the actual washing of the feet. So at the baptismal font, then here in the center aisle, Gary and Helen will be there, and they will be leading in hand washing there at the the baptismal font. So you could choose feet washing, or you could choose hand washing. For those of you at home, If you're gathered with someone, what I would recommend is that you take turns and wash each other's feet. If you are not with someone, then I might suggest you create a ritual of going and washing your hands. Because when we wash our hands, part of why we do that, a large part of why we do that, is in order to serve others. So create that ritual in your home, in the space where you are, as you join all of us in the ritual of washing the feet. And Virginia will just play some music quietly in the background for the rest of us.
Jesus, you said to your disciples, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. You say to us today, peace. May the peace of our beloved Christ be with you all. Thank you. I'd like to invite you to stand so that we can share a sign of peace with one another. We are at COVID Green, so it's okay to move about the sanctuary as we get to that point if you um, would like to. What we've been doing at Light of Christ, because we know some people are still social distancing. So if you are social distancing, stay in your pew. Do this like you're hugging yourself, but we can still share peace with you by looking in your eyes and kind of hugging you back, but at a social distance. If you would all first turn with me to the back cameras so that we could share some sign of peace with those participating from home as they share peace with us. And then you are free to move about the sanctuary if you so choose. As we all now move to our tables to celebrate the Eucharist together, I invite you to go back to your seats and be seated. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and this wine to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May these become for us the bread of life and the cup of love. Blessed be God forever. and brothers, my family, that these our gifts, our lives, may continue to be blessed by our loving God. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, sacrifice at our hands for the, the praise and glory of God's, God's name, for our good and the good, and the good of all God's, God's world. You may remain seated for the liturgy of the Eucharist, and may the love of God be with you all and also with you. Thank you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our loving God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. O oh God, it is our joy to give you thanks and praise through Christ, your eternal Son. You are the source of all life and goodness. Through your eternal word, you have created all things from the beginning. When we turned away, you called us back to yourself and gave your Son to share our human nature in your divine blessing. Therefore, together with all of creation, with the choirs of angels and shepherds, we are glad to sing. in the name of 
God, united in Christ with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, O God, in songs of everlasting praise. Send your Holy Spirit that these gifts of bread and wine which we receive may be to us the body and blood of Christ, and that we, filled with the Spirit's grace and power, may be renewed for the service of your reign. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread, God, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it. Then he gave it to his friends and said, Take Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which which will be given up for you. Do this in memory of me. That same night, Jesus took the cup filled with wine. God, again, he gave you thanks and praise. Then he gave the cup to his friends and said, Take Take this, all of you, and drink drink from from it. This This is the cup cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sin may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, loving God, recalling your great goodness to us in Christ, following his model of servanthood in this ministry, knowing of his suffering and death, his raising from the dead and ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate our redemption with this bread of life in this cup of love. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking, that our eyes might be open that we might recognize the risen Christ in our midst, indeed in one another. Come, Holy Spirit, come. God, share your grace with our bishops, especially Bishop Jim and Bishop Kay, that they may continue to be inspired to serve. As two communities that worship together, may we be a sign of your diversity and your unity. Remember our sisters and brothers and family, our ancestors and all who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising in your light. Bring them and all the departed into the embrace of your presence with Mary, Jesus' mother, with the apostles and friends, the martyrs, all the saints who have modeled your will throughout time. May we praise you in dancing in glory now and forever. Together, then, we say, Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, all loving God, forever and ever. join our hearts together in love, praying for our world in words that people have prayed with Jesus for centuries. Our Our Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen.
Jesus, bread of life, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Prince of Peace, you take away. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have grant us your peace. This is the living God the body and blood of Christ. This is the one who has transformed the world with love, the one who transforms us. Blessed are we who are called to this meal. God, I am ready to receive you because by your invitation I am here. At Light of Christ, throughout the Ecumenical Catholic Communion, we believe in the true presence of Christ in one another as well as in this meal. What we also believe is that Jesus has already extended the invitation to each and every one of us gathered today, and we are glad to re-emphasize that invitation that all are welcome here. No matter where you are on your journey, you are invited to be part of this meal with us. Now, I do know that Light of Christ and Bethlehem Lutheran do the logistics of communion a little bit differently. So I'll explain to you how we do that at Light of Christ. Um, You'll come forward in one of the two main aisles here, either the center aisle or the side aisle. You'll come forward and you'll receive bread first, just so you know. Our bread is divided and we put them in what we call holy muffin tins. And so you will take one piece of bread out of one of the the tins there. Then, after coming up the aisle, you will head out to the outer wall, and you can stop at the wine station if you so choose. At Light of Christ, we only have wine. There is no grape juice at that station. They're in little cups, and so you'll consume it right there, and then put the cup back into the tray. And then you can go back sort of around to those outer walls and back to your seat. Uh, We do have gluten-free. I'm trying to remember all the things I say. We do have gluten-free. That's on this round plate right here, and it will be on the table right there by that candle, and you can um, receive gluten-free there. Um, And this aisle is on the camera, and this is not, so if if that is something that interests you, um, you know that. But the most important thing is that all are welcome here. All are welcome to be part of this meal, and consuming one element or two elements is consuming the full communion that Jesus offers today. For those of you at home, receive the grace that God shares with you today.
shall come to know His glory. Peaceful now, roses white are blessed with understanding. shall come to know His glory. Gentle one, child of God, join with us at this table. Bless our lives, very short. You may remain seated, but let us pray. God, you have refreshed us at this meal. May we continue to recognize God in us all and give generous expression to this wonderful gift we share. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We will end this service together, although it continues into Good Friday. Part of the tritium is these three uh, services, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Vigil, are really one liturgy. And so our life becomes part of the liturgy. We move back and forth between gathering together as God's people and going out and living our lives. And all of that is part of this liturgy. So how we will end the service today is with two particular rituals. The first is called the stripping of the sanctuary, and that will happen in silence. And there's a few of us who will be involved in sort of clearing things out that are here in the sanctuary. 
and it will become very stark. It will feel empty, and it will be silent. And that's how the ritual is really supposed to feel. It prepares us for tomorrow and Good Friday. And then what we will do is we will take the holy sacrament that has been reserved in the tabernacle and we will process it throughout the sanctuary and the people gathered as the body of Christ. Those of you participating from home, you will be able to see and witness that and know that we go right under your camera. You are part of that process as well. And then the sacrament will end up on the back altar, what we call the altar of repose. And so you can stay here as long as you wish this evening and sit by that altar and sit with the sacrament. That is part of the Catholic tradition. While we are moving the blessed sacrament throughout the sanctuary, we will be listening to a reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14. For those of you who are from Light of Christ, what I want you to know before you hear the words starting to be spoken is that this will be a recording that was made by Les Smith. Les was a member of Light of Christ who died about four years ago. For those of you who don't know Les, it's going to sound like the voice of God is speaking, which is why we chose this. So let us begin the stripping of the sanctuary.
do not be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. In my mother's house, there are many rooms. Otherwise, I would not have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. After I have gone and prepare a place for you, I shall come again and take you to me, so that where I am, you also may be. Yet you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. If you know me, you will know the Father also. Indeed, you know him, and you have seen him. To ask, Lord, show us the Father, and that is enough. Jesus said to him, What? I have been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip. Whoever sees me, sees the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? All that I say to you, I do not say of myself. The Father who dwells in me is doing his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. At least believe it on the evidence of these works that I do. Truly I say to you, the one who believes in me will do the same works that I do, and he will even do greater than these, for I am going to the Father. Everything you ask in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Indeed, anything you ask, calling upon my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he is with you and will be in you. I will not be your orphans. I am coming to you. A little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live, and you will also live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever keeps my commandments is the one who loves me. If he loves me, he will also be loved by my Father. I too shall love him, and show myself clearly to him. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, asked Jesus, Lord, how can it be that you would show yourself clearly to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, 
If, if anyone, anyone loves, loves me, me, he will keep, keep my, my word, word, and my, my Father will love him, him and, and we will come, come to him, him and live with him. him. But, but if, if anyone, anyone does, does not love me, me he will not keep my words. words. And, and these words, words that, that you hear are not, not mine, mine, but the Father's who sent me. I told, I told you, you all this is while, I am still, still with you. From, From now on, the Helper, the, the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit whom the Father, Father will send in, in my name, my name will, will teach, teach you all things, things and remind you of all that I have told you. you. Peace, peace be with you. I, I give, give you my peace. peace. Not as the world gives you peace, peace, do I give it to you. Do, do not be troubled. troubled. Do, do not, not be afraid. afraid. You heard me say, say I, I am going, going away, away, but I am coming, coming to you. If you, if you loved me, you would be, be glad, glad that I go, go to the Father, for the, for the Father is greater than I. I have, I have told, told you this now, before, before it, it takes place, place. So, so that, that when, when it, it does, does happen, happen, you, you may, may believe. There, there is, is a little, little left for me to tell you. you. For the, the prince, prince of this, of this world, world is at hand, hand. although there, there is nothing in me that he can claim. claim. But to see, the, the world, world must, must know. know that, that I, I love the Father, and, and that, that I, I do what the Father has, has taught, taught me to do. Come, Come now, let, let us, us go. go. Come now, let us go. Go in peace.